Welcome to the training lesson on the Digital Stores Management System, or DSMS, often pronounced DISMOS. We'll conduct this lesson right here on the ramp, so I'm going to run the batteries and bring up some systems. DSMS is the primary interface between the pilot and payload. In the A10C, weapon profiles are used to select and configure the weapon of choice, so that you are not really selecting a weapon per se, but selecting a profile which has a weapon assigned. For example, you can create multiple profiles for a particular weapon to prepare for various tactical scenarios. DSMS allows you to create and customize up to 20 profiles, each saved under a unique name. Profiles can be cycled by DSMS controls on the MFCD, the select rocker on the UFC, or host task controls when the HUD is soy. A selected profile is called an active profile, and is displayed on the bottom left corner of the HUD. DSMS includes the following pages. Status page, inventory select page, selective jettison page, and missile control page. Some of these have additional subpages. The DTS upload page is now up. Press OSB 18 on the left MFCD to upload the DSMS data. Okay, now let's select the DSMS page with OSB 14. You are now looking at the status page, which is the primary display of the DSMS. This page allows you to quickly view the following information. Weapon inventory and status for each of the 11 stations, release settings for the active profile, gun status and ammunition remaining, EO power timer if Maverick is active. At the top of the display, OSB 1, 2, and 4 and 5 allow you to access the other pages of the display. Without pressing any buttons, take a moment to become familiar with the display. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to proceed. Let's set the master arm to training mode. Right click once to set the switch to train. The blue indication on the DSMS denotes training mode. White indicates master arm safe and green indicates master arm arm. As you can see, stations 1 through 11 are displayed sequentially clockwise starting from the bottom left corner. Each station box indicates the profile name which usually corresponds to the designation of the loaded weapon and the quantity remaining. Depending on the weapon, additional information may be contained inside the box, such as the launcher configuration or weapon sensor status. In the bottom center of the display, the cannon data block indicates the ammunition type and amount remaining. The center of the display indicates the current HUD mode and additional details of an active profile where one is selected. Press the spacebar key to proceed. Starting with Station 1 on the left side of the aircraft, we are carrying the ALQ-131 ECM pod, an LAU-68 2.75 inch rocket pod with 7 training rounds loaded, an AGM-65D, a BRU-42 rack with 3 BDU-33 training bombs, and a GBU-38. Continuing to the right side, we have another GBU-38, another BRU-42 rack, an AGM-65K, the AN-AAQ-28 lighting pod, and the LAU-105 launcher loaded with two AIM-9Ms. We are also carrying 1,150 target practice rounds for the gun. Let's first cycle through the default profiles loaded from the DTS. To do this, we need to take the HUD out of guns mode and into either CCIP or CCRP modes. Press the Hold Task Master Mode button or the M key on the keyboard once. We can now cycle the profiles using the select rocker key on the UFC. 
Alternatively, because the HUD is currently soared, you can press the Hotels DMS left or right commands or delete and page down on the keyboard. To see a list of all loaded profiles, let's enter the profile main page by pressing OSB1. The profile main page presents a list of all loaded profiles. Press OSB19 to designate the WTU Rockets profile with a pointing arrow. You can now move this profile up and down the list using OSB6 and 7. Disable the profile with OSB9 and activate the profile with OSB17. However, let's instead press OSB3 to enter the profile control page to view the settings of this profile. The profile control page displays the weapon settings as set in the current profile. You can alter the settings along the left and right sides of the display. The settings in the profile table in the center of the display can also be changed, but from other pages. OSB 19 and 20 will cycle through the profiles without making them active. Let's try changing some of these settings for this profile. Looking at the right side of the display, you can see the current release quantity is set to single. This means that for each press of the weapon release button, only a single rocket will be fired. Let's change this to ripple single by pressing OSB 6 twice. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. You can now set the ripple quantity to determine how many rockets will be fired while the weapon release button is held down. For example, to set the quantity to 3, press button 3 on the UFC and then OSB 8 to enter the value into the profile. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Additional options on this page include OSB 10 to set the default HUD mode and OSB 18 to paste current profile settings into a new profile. Press OSB 16 to enter the profile settings subpage to access additional settings underlined in the data table of the display. You can now see additional profile settings. On the left side of the display, these include the escape maneuver, desired time of flight, and minimum altitude. On the right side of the display, you can set the horizontal offset, vertical offset, weapon eject velocity, and bomb rack delay. Press OSB 3 to save the changes to this profile. We are now back on the profile main page. Just as we did for the WTU profile, we could select and edit any of the other profiles. Press OSB1 to return to the DSMS status page. Profiles can also be accessed in manual mode by selecting stations via OSBs directly on the status page. Multiple stations can be selected if they are loaded with identical weapons, launchers, and profile settings. Press OSB7 and 19 to select stations 4 and 8 loaded with BRU racks. Note the additional profile information in the center of the display. The profile name now begins with an M forward slash to indicate manual mode. Profile operations in manual mode are identical to default profiles, but the profile is standalone and cannot be cycled to unless it is saved into the DSMS. Pressing the profile OSB1 while in manual mode will open the profile control page directly. Let's take a look at the profile settings available for bomb release. Bomb profiles include the additional option of the view settings with OSB7. This can be cycled between nose for nose fusing, tail for tails fusing, and NT for nose and tail fusing. Press OSB 6 twice to change the release setting to Ripple Single as we did earlier for rockets. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set.
With bomb release set to a ripple setting, you can also adjust the ripple quantity and impact separation in feet. Let's change the impact separation to 150 feet. Type in 150 into the HUD scratch pad using the UFC and then press OSB9 to enter the value into the DSMS. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Now save the changes with OSB3. Press OSB1 to return to the DSMS status page. Next, let's take a look at the missile control page accessed by pressing OSB2 from the status page. The missile control page is used to configure the AGM TGM 65 and AIM 9 missiles. We'll discuss the Maverick missiles first. OSB4 enables and disables power to the Maverick Seeker Head. Whenever the Seeker Head is activated, it will need 3 minutes to align, so this should be done prior to entering the target area. Once activated, an EO timer is displayed in the bottom right corner of the display. You can try pressing the button now, but note that in training mode, the DSMS will not actually power up the Seeker. OSB5 selects between manual, location and time modes of applying EO power. In manual mode, the seeker head is only powered by the pilot pressing the EO power OSB. In location mode, the seeker head is powered at a set range and bearing from a specified waypoint. In time mode, the seeker head is powered at a specific clock time. Press OSB 5 to set the location automatic power function. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Configuring the Location Automatic Power On function requires a few steps. First, select the Waypoint Rotary by pressing OSB9. You should see the up-down rotary arrows on the OSB become highlighted. Now, press the Function button on the UFC, indicated by the F adjacent to the UFC scratch pad on the HUD and press the select rocker up to cycle to the next waypoint. You will see the waypoint number change on the missile control page. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. Now to enter bearing and range, type in a bearing value in the USC, for example 065, and press OSB7. Then type in a range value, for example 20, followed by OSB8. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. EO power will now be applied to the Maverick automatically as you approach 20 nautical miles at bearing 065 from the designated waypoint. The diameter of the activation point is 10 nautical miles or 25% of the set range from the waypoint, whichever is greater. When set to time mode, the time EO power function on OSB 10 is used to enter a clock time value in a similar fashion as we entered the bearing and range information for location mode. The Maverick Voresight Adjust function on OSB 6 is used to set the Voresight position of the missile seeker. On the left side of the display, OSB-19 is a rotary function to set the AIM-9 missiles to off, cool, and select modes. When set to select, the HUD mode changes to air-to-air. -to -air. Press OSB-1 again to return to the DSMS status page. Next, we'll take a look at the Jettison Select page. Press OSB-4. The Jettison Select page is similar to the status page except you are now selecting stores to jettison. OSB4 is a rotary function to select between fuse options. OSB5 is a rotary to select between the following jettison modes. STR, store. When in STR mode, the user can jettison stores from one or more selected stations. Stores are released in pairs mode. Rack, station rack. When in rack mode, the user can select one or multiple stations that have racks assigned to them 
and jettison them along with any stores attached to them. If more than one station is selected that is assigned a rack, then they are released in paired mode. A rack or pair of racks is jettisoned with each press of the weapon release button. MSL Missile In this mode, any Maverick assigned to an LAU-88 tier will be launched in an unguided, unarmed mode with each depression of the weapon release button. If both tiers are selected, Mavericks will be launched in pairs. MSL Jettison is not available for the LAU-117. If a station is selected that is not loaded with the LAU-88 and Maverick, only the station number will be displayed in reverse video. When you are ready, press OSB1 to return to the status page. For our last topic of the lesson, let's enter the Inventory Select page with OSB5. The primary function of the Inventory page is to allow you to assign a particular weapon to a specified weapon station. This allows you to correct an error when the weapon type does not match the one specified in the profile, and it allows you to set additional weapon settings not available in the Profile Settings page. It also allows you to create virtual payloads in training mode. Outside of a malfunction that produces an error, you should not have a need to access this page in normal operations, because the DTS cartridge will include all the default profiles for the weapons loaded on the jet. However, we'll try setting up one station as an example. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. We'll reset the Maverick on Station 3. First, press OSB 18 to select the station. Now press OSB 18 again to select Missile as the weapon class. And now you can select the specific missile model loaded. Notice also you can select between missile types with OSB4, missile quantity with OSB5, and launcher configuration with OSB8. Press OSB18 once more to select AGM-65D. Let's return to the status page with OSB1. This concludes the training lesson on the Digital Stores Management System.